Morning YouTube, Rob Brindo here and I've now decided that I'm going to start reviewing the manga series that I currently own and today I'm going to start off with effectively what is Genesis for me and the, you know, the bible of all manga films Akira Okay, this is the original and this is the digitally remastered version which I picked up in the box there which is... Yeah, I picked this up many years ago when Virgin Megastore was still around and before they uh, yeah, finally went under. Akira is the story of um, psychics in Neo Tokyo in the year 2019 after World War III where effectively like a giant bomb went off but I'll come to what it actually was in a minute. The story revolves around a young boy called Tetsuo, who is part of the biker gang, along with his friend Kaneda, who's kind of like the leader of it. And um, after having a bit of a fight with a rival motorbike gang called the Clowns, uh, there's a bit of an accident involving Tetsuo on the highway, where he crashes into a young boy, a young boy called Takashi, who's actually a psychic, who's well, one of three psychics. And Tetsuo is injured quite badly, gets taken away by the army, etc. etc. Later, find turns out that Tetsuo has psychic powers, and because he's been the smallest of like the group, his the motorbike gang, he's always been picked on, and because he's just you know the runt of the litter. Anyway, Tetsuo gets out of hospital and goes on a bit of a spree, and his powers activate. During like a small fight with a with a group of, with a couple of the uh, remaining clowns that haven't run off. Um, the story, apart from there, goes on with Tetsuo just kind of figuring out. Well, you know, I've got these powers, but then there's someone more powerful than me, a guy called Akira, who, as it turns out, was the bomb, but not intentionally. Um, but it does kind of bring up the question, what would you do if effectively you became one of the most powerful people on the planet? You know, would you use your powers for good, you know? Would you go and do something like stamp out poverty or wipe out war, that sort of stuff? Or, on the other hand, would you use it for evil or your own purpose, you know, world domination or something ridiculous like that? But in Tetsuo's case, he wants to go on a kind of religious quest to go and find Akira and get some questions answered. Um, but along the way, his powers start to grow more and more. So it's kind of things like, at first he can just you know, lift up like a rock or a glass of water and by the end of it, he's pretty much doing things like crushing bridges with people on them. He could lift, if you go by the book, he actually ends up in orbit well, in the film he does as well, he has a fight with um, a satellite, with a you know, laser-powered satellite called Sol. Um, and he basically just crushes that and pulls it from orbit. And I won't tell you all the details because otherwise you won't watch it. Um, in the very end, he does meet Akira, and so do we. I think Akira's actually in the whole story physically for maybe about five seconds. But... All the other characters, so for instance there's Kaneda, who's the leader of the bike gang, Tetsuo, who's his best friend, but because he's the smallest he's kind of, as I said, the run of the letter. Kay, who is part of a resistance group. Um, Roy, who is kind of Kay's leader, but she kind of fancies him, but you know, he bites the bullet. And then you've got the Colonel, who runs the project that created the psychics? Well, I don't, I don't necessarily think it's the one who created them, but he currently runs it and looks after them. The doctor who does all the medical stuff, etc., but he's a bit. Um, and then you've got the boys themselves. So you've got Takashi, who's a psychic, Masaru, who's a disabled kid, but also a, a psychic and then Kyoko, who is the only remaining girl alive, but again, it's the third psychic. And then Akira, who has been 
left to sleep in like a humongous sort of cryogenic thing under the um, Olympic Stadium. But the diff there is a huge difference between the one in the book and the one in the film. I'm not going to tell you what it is because it will spoil it. Needless to say, this film was kind of like the beginning for everything for me. I was about six when this... Yeah. Came out in 88, so I would have been about six years old, and I didn't see it until I was about eight, nine-ish at the time, and I remember just sitting there watching it, and I was like... I think it was like the first cartoon I ever watched where, you know, people got killed and such, and not that I'm a sadist or anything, but, you know, when you grew up with things like, you know, uh, Teddy Ruxpin and Inspector Gadget, you know, and, uh, he-Man, you know, they did a little bit of fighting, but nothing that was compared to this. And then when I decided to start watching manga stuff when I was legally able, my first one, they, I didn't actually buy this straight away. I really wanted a copy, but I just completely forgot about it. And then one day, as I said, when I was in Brighton, going through Virgin Megastore, they had this massive sale on because obviously they were going, oh, excuse me, they were going under. And I went and bought it because it was like five quid for the box set. You know, as I said, you know, that's the cover. That's the, uh, as I said, this is the remastered one, which I'll come on to in a second. I would thoroughly, thoroughly recommend if you're going to go and start a manga collection, or even if you just want to buy one, buy Akira. It is where everything started. You know, it was. Well, it was groundbreaking at the time, you know, all the visual effects in there, the storyline was just incredible. Then they decided to do the remastered version. Now, the one thing I should point out is, uh, you know, the story, all the artwork is exactly the same, except it's been put through a renderer, so it's been cleaned up, so it's not, so it's all like nice and shiny and brilliant, etc. But the actors are, well, actors and actresses are completely different. So, for instance, the bloke who plays Kaneda is Johnny Young Bosch, who you may remember from Power Rangers. He was the replacement Black Ranger from the first, from Mighty Morphin. He also does the voice for Vash in Trigun. And the person who plays um, Tetsuo he also did the voice for Knives in Trigun. Uh, I don't know what else he's done, but I can actually put up links for it on the bottom in the uh, description bar. Um, like I said, there are some parts in this comic, in the comic as well, so f that I'm actually in the film. So, for instance, what Akira really is, you know, how he progressed after he got his powers and everything, and sort of what he did. And it all answers the question of, you know, what is it to have the power of God effectively? You know, no one can hurt you, but then what do you do with it? You know, do you go off and be some sort of hope, or you know, are you going to effectively become the God, a God, or are you going to become the devil? You know, where do you stop from personal gain to? you know, being selfless, that sort of stuff. It's kind of a bit like the Jedi and the Sith from Star Wars, you know. See Anakin Skywalker for a quote in episode th three, I think it is. Like, as I said, this film is brilliant. I think every manga person who has a collection should needs to have this in their collection at some point. Um, the book is okay, it's a bit long winded, it is something like two and a half thousand pages of graphic novel, but don't get me wrong, the artwork in it is, is, it, in it is spectacular, I can get that working, um, but personally it's the film for me, and it will always will be. And so from that, next one I'm going to talk about is Redline, which I'm going to do in a minute, but I will post link a uh, link to Wikipedia and anything about Akira separately into the description below, bar below and please spread the word of these because I want to try and make these reviews a bit more popular now because there are other reviews out there but 
nothing on kind of like a personal level. Plus, I wanted to put loads of pictures from the cartoon series in, but they're copyrighted by ADV Films and Masamune Shira, who's the maker. So I'm not going to chance it because I've already had one account closed. Um, so, like I said, Redline is up next. So I'll be with you shortly. Bye.